Best-selling author Van Moody says that the best way to achieve happiness and success in life is to build a great relationship with the person looking back at you in the mirror. But what does that mean and how do we even go about achieving that and what he calls the I factor? Welcome back to The Harvest Show, Pastor Moody. Thank you for having me. It's a joy to be with you. Okay, the I factor. For people who have not heard your story about the I factor and why you wrote this book, what is the I factor? Sure. The I factor is how a person thinks about themselves, feels about themselves, relates to themselves. It's a combination of dynamics that form a person's relationship, their total relationship with themselves. Well, how do you not have a relationship with yourself? It was kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around that. Sure. But you spell it out plain and simple. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. We assume uh, that people have healthy relationships with themselves, but uh, life is set up in such a way that it encourages us to always think externally. Mm -hmm. And so we have a tendency to focus so much on others and never really focus on ourselves to do the work to become healthy. And I've learned that all successful living and success at any level is an inside job. So the best life is a successful life from the inside out. That's what the I factor is about, and that's mm -hmm. why it's high time for people to really focus on it. And what kind of got you on this pathway to, to, to really dig in and, and, and hone this message and bring it to, to the body of Christ and to the world at large. What was it that you saw that kind of put you on the pathway to, to finding out what was missing in this area? Sure. Well, with my last book, The People Factor, um, in that best-selling book, I talk about biblical relationships with others. But I began to notice uh, in recent history and just history in general and in my congregation and in all of the places that I traveled that a parallel truth was arguably more real for people. Mm -hmm. And that is that the most challenging relationship that many people have is not the one they have with others, but it's the one they have with themselves. And so that's where the I Factor message came from. And then uh, my fascination with the I Factor started through uh, reading the Bible uh, every year. And one particular story about Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, and how they were a great priest externally, but because they were not healthy and whole internally, it ended up really affecting the nation of Israel. And that's when my fascination of the I Factor really took, uh, really root in my heart and God showed it to me throughout the lives of other people. Mm. Okay, so let's just rehearse those three points that you say that make up the I Factor. They are one. You gotta have a healthy identity, mm -hmm. healthy sense of significance, and a healthy perspective. Those are the three key ingredients to having a great I Factor. Okay, so for an individual who's watching saying, I'm missing one or two of those Certainly. factors or probably all three. I suffer from low self-esteem. I don't think Absolutely. highly of myself. I don't have the confidence that I know God wants me to have. How can they jumpstart that process? Well, one of the greatest things is to grab the book, and I'm not saying that because I wrote it, but there are years of um, the Word of God and practical examples and key principles and also historical uh, evidence that will give people all of the tools that they need to make sure that they jumpstart their life towards the better I factor that Jesus wants them to have. Mm -hmm. And now for someone watching today saying, well, aren't you just talking about selfishness then? What's the difference mm -hmm. between selfishness sure. and really a healthy relationship with, with yourself? Yeah, selfishness is when the world starts with you and it ends with you. That's when you go through life only thinking about yourself. The I factor is about making sure that you are healthy internally so that the contribution you make to others is a healthy and significant one. Mm -hmm. We only reproduce who we are. We don't reproduce what we say. And so there are parents who say, you know, I want my children to live a better life, or I want them to grow up in the fear of the Lord, or I want them to be character-driven uh, people. Well, their children have to see that in mom and dad. Mom and dad can't expect for that child to do it because they say it. Children emulate what they see. So then that means that mom and dad have got to have healthy eye factors. They've got to live the message from the inside out. The change that so many people want to see, mm -hmm. it begins in us. Okay, so like... You sound like a just you like you have it really together. You have your I factor. <laughs> I mean, but you have to have street credibility to talk about this Absolutely. issue. Absolutely. How did it become a factor in your life? How did it become real to you? Well, you know, I grew up without my father. My parents divorced mm -hmm. when I was six months old, and I grew up uh, really as an angry kid because all of my friends had their father and I didn't. And it was very interesting that these three keys to a healthy I factor are really the three keys that I've had to accomplish in my own life to get where I am and just to be healthy for my wife and for my two children and for the congregation that I serve. So when I talk about identity, 
that was an area of my biggest struggle. Uh, feeling inadequate because my dad was not there, not knowing if I had the goods and if I was good enough, this notion of significance I struggled with. But then I had so many challenges in life, and so perspective was a really big issue. I could either allow those challenges and those hurdles to continue to define me, or I can look at them as stepping stones instead of stumbling blocks. Mm. And so those three keys to a healthy I factor also the three keys that have really changed my life as well. So I've got a ton of street cred in, <laughs> in your words. <laughs> is there a, a particular uh, principle, uh, there are many in the I factor in the sure. book. Is there, is there a favorite of yours or one that really uh, means the most to you? Yeah, I, I think um, this notion of identity mm -hmm. uh, and also finding your significance in God. I do a lot of work and one of my favorite chapters is a chapter on Leah. Uh, a lot of people know the story of Jacob and Rachel uh, and when you read that story from that perspective, it's a great love story. But a lot of people never deal with how mm -hmm. Leah felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when you look at that story in Genesis, and when Leah begins to have children, and the names that she gives to her kids all suggest that she's on a search for significance. Right. But then when she has the fourth child, Judah, which means I'm going to praise the Lord, you see a change in her when she finally finds that her real significance is in God. And I think that's what's near and dear to my heart, one of my favorites. And as I talk about the I factor, that message resonates with a lot of people because we spend so much time in our life searching for significance in all of the wrong places through all of the wrong things. Which mm. is probably why you opened the book talking about people who rise to fame and crash and burn. and Absolutely. And, you know, what would make them risk it all um, just for a moment of I don't know, pleasure or success. Yeah. How can we learn from their lessons? Well, one of the greatest things that we can learn from them, I had this conversation with a retired uh, NFL football player, mm -hmm. and I asked him point blank, I said, why is it that we see this epidemic of great athletes who crash and burn? And he said something to me that resonated with the message in I Factor. He said, you know, Pastor Van, the pressures are so great. Mm. And what I realized is that when the external pressures overwhelm the internal reserves in any person, sabotage and breakthrough, a breakdown rather, is going to happen. That's why you've got to be healthy from the inside out so that you can be strong and withstand the external pressures so that you can handle them the right way. Mm. Now we're getting ready uh, to, uh, well, just thinking about someone who's struggling right now and says, you know, I'm, 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 I'm out of whack internally. Sure. Uh, can you offer some simple steps or simple ways to start getting on the right path to having a healthy I factor? Absolutely. It starts, first of all, with anchoring their relationship with Jesus Christ. We have the ability to start anew with Christ, and that's what he desires. Like God's mercies are new every morning. Yeah, absolutely. You took the words right out of my mouth. But then it's to get on the path that he desires for us, and that's a path that, first of all, understands that who we are it's not what the world says. It's not what the situation that you may have been in or currently in right now says about mm -hmm. you. It's, it's what God says about you. Then also, once you understand that your identity is based on that, that's when your sense of significance begins to grow. That God has got great plans in store for me, that he's got a purpose for me, and that purpose outweighs any other hurdle, any other obstacle that's in front of me. And then to also understand that you have to look at life through the lens of the gospel mm -hmm. and the way that God sees it. Mm -hmm. God's plans are great plans for us. He tells Jeremiah and the people of Israel that I've got plans to prosper you and not harm you. That's encouraging because it means no matter where we are, God's got greater in store. Okay, so when I read the subtitle, I have to tell you, when I read the subtitle, I have to admit sure. that when I saw the words happy, successful life, I was wondering if it would have the depth um, the I factor would have the depth that we need to live the life you're talking about. Sure. And it's so refreshing to see that it does go beyond just the surface and what we see on the exterior. Yeah. Because oftentimes when we hear relationships or we or gurus talk about yep. having a better life, it usually has to do with what you do and not who you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things, Valerie, that I find so interesting, particularly with the feedback that I've been getting around the world about the book, is that a lot of people have, have been saying, you know, initially I didn't know if I wanted to read the book because when I first started opening the book, it forced me to recognize that I've got to do some work. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to understand. So you're right, this is not a glossy uh, kind of surface book. This book is based on the truths of God's word. And if you're willing to do the work, 
if you're willing to peel that onion and get to the core of who you are through Christ, then you can live your best life. But it's not an easy fix. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes, like peeling an onion in your kitchen, you know, it'll stink up the, yeah. the you know, make your eyes water and stink up the kitchen. It can be a messy process. And that's the same thing with your eye fact. If you're willing to do the work, it's a beneficial process, but it's also one that desire, well, demands your intentionality. Wow, some good stuff from Pastor Van Moody. To connect with Pastor Van, go to ifactorbook.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project. It's called The I Factor. Harvest will be, at, will be right back in just a moment.